Hey there, this is Andrew and today is going to be the first video of creating this chess game using Unity. We are going to be using things like loops, inheritance, event triggers, but most importantly, Canvas. We are going to be creating our entire game using Canvas as the backbone. And in this video we are going to be creating the most static part of the game, the board. And we're going to be going over the script that creates the cells for the board as well as coloring them. I think that's a good enough intro, let's get started. In our scene, we already have a camera, a parent canvas, which has been set to a reference resolution of 1600 by 900, and an event system. I've also cleared out all of the lighting tab and turned the camera's background color to white. It's just how I like to work. Now, if you're following along, it's time for the interaction portion to begin. We need to create three scripts named Board, Cell, and Game Manager. We're then going to be creating some prefabs using the same names and attach the newly created scripts to each of them. We're also going to be using some specific colors for this project. I'm going to show these colors on the screen now. You're going to add them to your favorite color presets. And that's all for now for the prefabs. Right now we're going to hop into Visual Studio and put some of our scripts together. The first thing is going to be this cell script, where we have a number of public variables, where we have a reference to the childhood image, a space to store the value of where the cell is going to be on the board, and a reference to the rec transform of the cell. Moving down, this setup function is going to be called when the object is created and is serving as a constructor for handling information given to it by the board. We will also just be getting the rec transform here as well. Now let's move on to the actual board script that sets all this information up. For the variables, we have a reference to the cell prefab that's going to be created. We will be placing each created instance of that cell prefab into this 2D array that we're calling all cells. And then moving on down, finally, this is where we create the board. Here we have two nested for loops, where we are instantiating a cell each loop. Within the loop, we first position the cell using the anchored position, and as of right now, we haven't set up the final anchored position for our cell prefab or its final size. So just hold off on this and I'll be explaining a little bit more about that later in the video. But to give you a quick rundown, each of the cells is going to be 100 by 100. And we're going to have our pivot point in the center of the cell. So when we go through our loop, we're going to want to offset every cell by 100. And then to accommodate for that center pivot, we're going to add 50 to it so we can add an additional offset. We're going to get the cell component of that new cell object and call that setup method that we created earlier. We're going to pass in the raw x and y value from our for loops as well as a reference to the board. We do this to allow any cell to access functionality within the board without using a singleton. Now we just need to alternate the coloring of the cells for that checkerboard pattern. Again, we have some nested loops, the first loop being a bit different this time around where we are adding two instead of one. And within the loop, on the first line, we're using a ternary operator to see if the value of the column is even. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but I think that's how you say it. If it is, we don't have to add an offset. If the value is odd, then we have to add one. Using this offset will give us the effect we're looking for. What I didn't realize is that when I programmed this, I accidentally flipped the X and the Y. And so as you can see here, we actually end up coloring the cells vertically first and then horizontally, which is the opposite of how we built the board, where we did the horizontal first and then the vertical. And that's it for the board. We just need to call the create method from our game manager, which we have this public variable. And then in start, we're calling the create method that we just created. And taking a closer look at our prefabs, we have a couple needy ones that need a few extra components. The board is going to need to have its own canvas, which will be inheriting a lot of its information from that ca parent canvas that we had in the scene earlier. And for the cell prefab, it's going to be based on a canvas image with a width and a height of 100. We're then going to be setting the anchor points to the lower left, which you can do by holding shift and hitting this button in the rec transform. But we want to keep the pivot or the little blue circle right in the center. That's where he's happy. If you don't keep the pivot centered, it'll add an extra step when we are moving pieces around the board to keep the pieces aligned with the cell that it's associated with. Also, childhood to the cell, there's another image that shows the outline when the cell is valid. This image stretches across the entire parent object and to do this we just need to hold alt and shift and hit this button in the rec transform. And for the game manager he just gets to hang out on his own little prefab island. And now that all our prefabs are ready to go let's connect everything and put it into the scene. So the first thing for our board prefab we're going to drop our cell prefab into that open field that we created earlier within the script. We're then going to be adding our game manager to the scene and then childing our board prefab to the parent canvas that we created earlier. 
Then we're going to select the game manager again and give it a reference to that board prefab we just put into the scene. Hit play and you should see something that looks like this. We're done with the board. If you got this far, thank you for joining me. If you'd like to listen to me talk, hit that like button. If you'd like to hear me talk some more, hit the subscribe button. If you would like to support me talk more, you can check out my Patreon in the description. And I'll see you next time.